Hey, it's Melody. Welcome to A Saner Spin, episode 15 from my kitchen this week. Um, I will be cutting open a pomegranate while I'm talking to you because we are talking about seasonal patterns. Uh, I had a reader ask me whether or not I dealt with se seasonal patterns in mania and depression, and I do. Um, not consistently. The falls are generally not so great for me. Uh, usually I have some sort of depression if I do have an episode, and sometimes I've actually had manic episodes in the fall, but something about the fall uh, causes instability for me, and I've been actually working on that in therapy. So I'm hoping that will help somewhat, but the question she had specifically was how do I cope with this, these seasonal changes, especially when you know in advance that they're going to happen. Um, and so I have a list of things. I'm going to start cutting these because it takes a while to cut a pomegranate. And I've watched YouTube videos of other people cutting pomegranates and they just don't meet my standards, which is basically based on what my mom taught me. So we will start with the pomegranate, which is something I very much enjoy and eat a lot of and is actually very good for you. But when it's in season in the fall, I get very excited. It is one of the few things, despite the fact that I experience a lot of depression in the fall. It's more likely that if I experience an episode in the fall, it'll be more depressive than manic. Uh, I always knew I have this one thing, these pomegranates. I have a great family and all of that as well, but I have them year round. There's something miraculous about this fruit regardless and that it, that it happens to appear at a time that's really tough for me. Um, but that said, I'm going to start cutting it and telling you some other ways. So first, um, I cope. On, on, with respect to this issue. But first, you can look at the top. And what I do is I actually go around, and this is how Mom and Jasby taught. I go around, right? And then I can go in a little, and then I take it off. So like a lid, and I take it off. And you may have some useful seeds inside there, um, and some may be too squishy for your liking. And I sort of pick from within what I like and what I don't. Some of these are too squishy. So I throw them away. I have a trash can down here. Um, and then I also peel around the whole thing, which is something that a lot of people don't do. But I found it makes it a lot easier uh, when you're trying to tear it apart. And when I peel around the whole... Can you bring the... My husband is in control of this thing, so he brought it back down. Well done. Uh, so you saw I, I went all the way around, basically. Um, and same thing. So I'm just going to keep cutting, like peeling the sides like you would um, sort of delicate orange. And on the insides that you do get out, you might find some useful... A lot of people would just throw these insides out completely. Um, and... Just to note, now a lot of them might be white because of the fact that they're out of season. Now, not completely out of season, but not completely in season yet. So that is something you may want to deal with. Um, what else was I saying? So I was saying about ways that I do cope. And one is to prepare. Uh, and by that, I mean, if you expect you may have some sort of episode, prepare extra sessions with your psychiatrist or psychotherapist. I encourage all of you, if you're capable of getting a therapist or a psychiatrist that also does therapy, do it. I've been doing it for about a year now. And if you find the right one, it's miraculous and amazing and worth, worth the cost. Um, that and also part of preparation is just controlling your diet, really simple stuff everyone's supposed to do, staying away from simple carbohydrates, uh, I'm not good at this part of it. I eat a lot of Kit Kats. Um, but if you can't, you know, you're not going to necessarily be perfect is what I'm saying, but do what you can. I'm pretty good at my sleep and reg regulating my sleep. I try not to oversleep, especially with bipolar de depression. Oversleeping can become a really big problem. Um, so that's the preparation part. Then there's this uh, list of ways to cope. While I'm here, let me just get rid of these, so these are the, I guess the rhymes. There's a poem by Rumi that says, we have taken, <laughs> roughly translated, we have taken religion, like, like if religion is like an orange, we've opened the orange, thrown away the fruit, and kept the peel, and called that religion. When really the orange was the religion. 
that's my Sufi poetry for you <laughs> for this week. Um, it's actually fantastic. So as you can see, I'm pulling out what I think, what little seeds are up to my standards. Um, I am a little compulsive with this. So you can sit it down. If you see this up top and you're going to see this up bottom. You can do it from either side, but I prefer to do it on this top side. And I put the knife in and I twist it. And after I twist it, this, this comes out, right? So they start coming out more easily. And I sometimes will also do another slight cut right there. And they start falling apart. And when they start falling apart, you get these individual seeds that a lot of people just dismiss. But I don't like dismissing the little guy. The little seeds are actually really good. You just have to be patient with them. Um, they're the ones that have fallen off the rest. Um, so then you peel this kind of stuff off. Um, I'm not sure what you call it. And then you'll run into seeds like this that aren't so good, and I just throw those away. Um, I don't want to scare you, but there it can be a maggot every once in a while, sort of life like life. But if you catch it early, I mean, it, it's it's not probably going to be dangerous to you, but it's very rare that you would find one. Um, I I mean, I've had whole pomegranate seasons go by where I haven't found a single one, and I eat about two to four a day. <laughs> so, and these are very small ones right now. Um, so anyway, while I'm peeling off the excess, let me go back into everything else. And that was, so I'll, I'll include a link down here of just a list of things. And I think a DBSA group came up with it. It's a pretty good one of just stuff I enjoy. And then you can add to it other things you enjoy. Like for me, I like going to the park. Walking is like what they're, they have on their list. My, what I have on my list is people watching, for example, sitting down at the park. Um, and people watching. I enjoy doing that. Or um, just anything that it is that you enjoy that is safe, I should say. Um, and even if you're in a place with depression that you feel like you can't enjoy that right now, do it anyway. And just keep doing it anyway as much as you can. And keep trying other things on that list and make sure that you have your own um, sort of customized list as well. So what I'm sending you this link to isn't just, I mean, it is pretty generic, but you can customize and it has, I think, lines on the bottom where you can do that. Another huge important part of my dealing with these episodes when they come um, is something I do year round that I think helps a lot. And there's actually data to support um, a an association at least between uh, showing gratitude and being happy. Um, and I keep a journal where I keep track of my sl sleep and um, pain. I have migraines. I keep track of that kind of stuff. I keep track of a lot of different things, um, but I also keep track of the things I'm grateful for and write about a dozen different ones every day. Um, that has been hugely helpful. Beyond that, also, I think, and this goes into the list of coping, I think it's important to have uh, people around you, and if that means going out of your way to go to meetups or places where you don't necessarily know people, uh, just to try as much as you can not to isolate yourself, even if the idea of socializing seems daunting, once you're there, it's often better. It's It doesn't fix everything necessarily, you know, but... Uh, you often do feel better. Um, so that that's another option. But there, there is help out there, and it's a matter of when it's seasonal, you, it, you have one sort of advantage of you can anticipate it's coming. Um, the other side of that is you can think, oh, I'm sad today. Oh, this must be the seasonal depression I'm anticipating. And you don't want to do that either because that n might just be a bad day. Um, so you just really have to know yourself. Um, and for me, one of the things that is just, Honestly, ridiculously, I don't know why, to what extent, how, how this happened, but if I did not have pomegranates in the fall when I was going through the worst emotional experiences of my life with my bipolar, I would not, um, 
I am not sure that I would be here. And it seems so simple and so small, but it gave me something to do. And I think part of it also has to do with it takes a lot of patience and time to open up a, com a pomegranate well. Um, you really have to respect the fruit. Uh, and because of that, I don't know, maybe that, that forms a, me a metaphor in a way, but it keeps me grounded and it's something that I have to take time to do. It's something that I connect to my history as an Iranian American, something I watched my mother do growing up. I find a lot of comfort in it. Uh, and, it's, and it's not a huge thing. And that's sort of the point I wanted to make is the things that help you cope don't always have to be huge things. They don't have to be big checks. They don't have to be much of anything, uh, but they have to have that significance to you. Um, so I hope that helped some. My husband has been a big help leaning down. Do you want to say hi? This is Matthew. Hello. <laughs> he has been a big help leaning up and down the camera uh, on the computer, but we have gone way over. It's like 11 minutes. So I will see you next time. Thanks for coming.